Hi everyone, welcome to the Kentico Content Admin Essentials video. In this video, we will be looking at Kentico's experience product, which is their digital experience platform. My name is Clyde de Souza. I am a software developer by profession, and for the past few years, I've been working with Kentico applications. When I first started, I was working with a Kentico 9. So when I first started, I installed Kentico uh, and played around with their demo site, which is, uh, which is their Dancing Goat website. And I thought, let's look at the Dancing Goat website once again for this video, but instead of using Kentico 9, we'll use their latest, latest version of the software, which is Kentico 12. So who is this for? Kentico Content Admin Essentials video. Who is this for? This video is primarily for the business users. So if you're in the working in the business and you would like to update the website or you'd like to uh, delete things from the website or you'd like to add things to the website, then this video is for you. So you could be either content managers you could be working in the marketing team or any other roles. Uh, essentially, this video is just training you up on the Kentico, uh, you know, the CMS fundamentals, the essentials, really, how to use this, this platform, how to use this UI and what, what to look for. Now, if you are a developer, uh, then you can also watch this video if you're looking to brush up on your CMS skills. Or, or, or just the Kentico foundational skills, right? So you need to, if you're, if you're a developer who, has, who is supporting Kentico applications, then you should be familiar with these concepts and you should be able to, um, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, speak Kentico uh, with, with the business users and, and suggest, um, you know, things for, uh, that might need updated, updating. Just to emphasize that this is the essentials video, which means that there are uh, many other concepts that we might not be able to cover in this video, right? So uh, it's it's just focusing on Kentico CMS's core product, which is which is essentially the CMS CMS platform. Uh, things like online marketing and e-commerce, uh, we won't be covering in this video. We'll probably do another one. Uh, sometime later. Um, also, something to note that um, you know every application, the especially the application that you have with you, uh, it it might be different. Every application is different. Uh, so the some of the features, hopefully in this video, we will we'll cover all the essential features. So you should have access to all of them, but. It depends on the license type that your application uses. Uh, you may or may not have access to certain features and that's totally okay, right? I just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, in the pricing tier, you, you, your application could be running uh, a free edition of Kendigo, which is, um, which is obviously free, but with limited features. Uh, so you'll have a lot of restrictions uh, or your application could be running a, a corporate license, which is, are quite expensive, but also includes all of their features uh, that they provide. So there's there should be no restrictions there. Uh, so you could be anywhere. Your application could sit anywhere in this scale. Uh, and so if you want to know what license your application uses, then feel free to get in touch with your IT team, the internal IT team, and they should be able to advise you of the same. Uh, for more details on the, the Kentico licensing, uh, feel free to visit this link that I mentioned on the slide. I'll also update uh, the description of the video and, and put all of the links uh, you know, that I'll be showing you on, on all of these slides. And any other helpful, helpful links, I'll, I'll put it in the description of this video. All right, then. Without, without further, further uh, Ado, uh, let's let's uh, dive into dive into the contents of this video. Now I've prepared a diagram uh, for us to go through, um, and let it starts over here, right? So you are the business 
uh, users you are the business um, and uh, or, or you're a, you're a non-developer now of course I've just broadly classified uh, this into non-developers but of course if you are a developer and you're watching this video it just means that we are not going to look at um, any the decoding side of things right so we're just going to look at uh, Kentico uh, from a C complete CMS users perspective so everything from the browser uh, so it just means that and uh, and hopefully even the developers if you're watching this video you should be you should be uh, you should find this helpful as well so uh, you're a developer you're a non-developer you're a business user uh, you have really what you really want to get out of the system is uh, four four main um, four main actions right so you want to uh, you want to be able to view the content you want to be able to add content to your website and you want to be able to update content and then finally you want to be able to delete content from the website so this is essentially four actions that you would want to take and uh, you know and and the Kentico content admin essentials this video is for you to be able to um, for you to be able to really be able to do these four core actions you know so you understand the concepts and you should be able to do these actions on your Kentico application uh, and so that's exactly what I've mentioned in this diagram for you to be able to really do these four actions uh, you should be able to you should know stuff uh, so in this case you should know some Kentico complete essentials right so Kentico concepts you should know that stuff you should be able to find stuff because most uh, in, in some cases you you uh, you know you're not your application is not starting from scratch many of the things have already been configured for you so if you need to update things you need to be able to find this stuff and and you should be able to then once you find things you should be able to do stuff that is the actual uh, you should be able to actually take action on things uh, so in this video we will actually cover all of the three uh, three checkpoints or the three key uh, milestones right so and and uh, I will use um, the description of this video to um, to add some uh, markers in terms of the timeline so you can click and you know uh, move between these sections first up we will look at uh, oops first up we will look at no stuff uh, so what do we have under no stuff under no stuff we have three main blocks uh, the first one is where to find help uh, now the reason included this at the very beginning is uh, and, and the reason we're talking about this at the very beginning is uh, that even though we we cover a lot of concepts that you might still you know in the real world you might still come across things that you are not you're not still familiar with or you have not already covered or we have not already covered in this video so you should be able to know where to find things um, we will sim it's quite related to where to find help we will look at the Kentico menu and then we will look at the content tree right so let's cover this by introducing you to the dancing goat website now I've installed um, the dancing goat website locally uh, so it's running on my machine at the moment uh, it's a pretty simple uh, but you know quite comprehensive website now has an has an author has has a user uh, if you know you have already been hopefully you have already been given access to uh, to log into the website so you should be able to uh, log into the admin portal by um, by uh, going to the URL of the website uh, and then uh, suffixing it with a forward slash admin and hit on enter this should take you to the Kentico's um, login page. Now, this might be customized uh, depending on how your application is configured. You might be taken, you know, uh, to your to another single sign-on page uh, that your company has set up for you, uh, or you might just have a Kentico username and password. In this case, let's log in uh, with Andrew's account. So Andrew is an editor. 
all of the of the dancing goat website so let's log in using andrew's account the moment we log in to the site we are taken to the dashboard page right so that is really the home page of the of the of the site uh, so coming back to uh, coming back to our diagram here uh, we have two things uh, that we need to look at before we jump into the content tree uh, we need to look at the Kentico menu and then we need to look at where to find help so both are quite related as I said let's close this banner because I'm on a um, I have a trial version set up at the moment uh, for Kentico 12 uh, and so let's close this so for um, so for where to find help uh, what we can do is uh, if you're you know if you're uh, on your admin page at the moment uh, or any page in the you know in the administrator portal uh, you will find a question mark icon at the top right of your screen clicking on that brings up a blue banner which tells you some information about your application tells you your the version that your application is running the version of Kentico uh, and a few other links um, these two links over here is very useful so if I click on the open documentation link it should take me to the it should take me to Kentico's official documentation site and that's pretty much where you go for um, for uh, any any questions that you might have right so in this case we're using Kentico 12 and we're using the portal engine uh, format um, but in terms of just content you should be able to for example if I just search for pages uh, it should be you should have a lot of content relating to that uh, you can also click on the ask the community link which takes you to sort of a question and answer forum type of format um, where you can post uh, you know you can post your questions in there you can also use stack overflow and just tag just use the tag Kentico which or which in which case your question should also appear on this page um, posting questions is quite um, is definitely quite helpful because um, you know there's there's a whole community out there who who looks at these questions and and is willing to provide answers for these um, now if you are on any particular page so let's say you're on the on the pages uh, screen and you want some help relating to pages you can click on the question mark icon and you will notice that apart from these two links that we've looked at previously you st you have two more links one is about pages which uh, so Kentico knows that you're on the pages um, section of the admin portal so it will give you the link to about pages and a few other how-to articles so which you can click on it and uh, for example if you want to know how to create pages click on it and it should show you the documentation page specifically uh, for creating a new page so this is quite handy to have clicking on the home icon here takes you back to the dashboard so that's that's the that's the way to find help and uh, now the Kentico menu uh, so you would have noticed that you have a lot of icons over here so just let's just quickly you know browse through um, all these icons uh, so you will start from here we already looked at the question mark icon which is really the help section um, of your admin portal uh, then we have a user icon which tells you your username or uh, your, your full name and a sign out option uh, this particular label tells you where you are at on the administrator portal this little drop down allows you to switch between sites now Kentico is a CMS portal uh, but it is also a multi site CMS portal which means on one instance you can actually have multiple sites running uh, which means as a user if you have access to two different sites you can switch between them for now we'll just have a look in dancing goat the home icon here takes you to the dashboard screen or the home page 
uh, if you're you know if you're let's say you know we were on the pages section and we just quickly wanted to go to the dashboard page then this is where you'd go and then finally the Kentico icon which is also um, which is also a button to open the application list now when you open the application list you will um, see the list of applications that you have access to now as an editor this is something that you would have access to uh, we will be having, having a look at quite a few of these so don't worry about don't worry about it at this stage um, but you know just in case you wanted to search anything um, that uh, you know that pops up into your mind let's say media libraries and then you know shows up over here click on click on it and you should be able to head over to that page so that is the Kendico menu now finally we'll look at content tree because just like the name suggests it has a whole bunch of content inside of it right so let's have a look at content tree and the three main blocks under content tree uh, so Kentico being a CMS is obviously content driven as the name suggests it's a content management system CMS which means everything revolves around content right um, so the three main blocks of content are pages which is pretty much all of the the thing the the, the content you'll see in the on your on your and then pretty much uh, all of the content that you will deal with on a day-to-day -day basis uh, apart from pages you also have folders and files now files is you know just static files like uh, images or PDF files or any other other files and folders of course you know what folders are so files and folders work in the same way that uh, files and folders on your uh, PC on your Windows PC works right so it's the same concept um, and and pages is something that we will look at today uh, so before we actually dive into what the the other blocks that are under pages let's actually look at these three in the Kentico portal so we go back to our Kentico dashboard uh, and you would see instantly uh, there's a block for pages right so this is the shortcut that we can pin uh, items to it so we can pin items to our dashboard so you know you don't have to search you can just click on it and straight away go to pages but let's say if you wanted to search for it you would click on the open applications menu click on so we'll search for pages and click on pages now as you can see this is the content tree right uh, so you have the dancing goat root page uh, and then below that you have all of the parent pages uh, which basically matches this section here uh, and if you expand on one of these oops if you expand on if you expand on one of these pages here adjust this browser if you expand one of these pages here you can see that there's still more pages beneath uh, or underneath the main page so that's pages uh, and if you want to create a new page you can uh, depends on where you are so wherever you so you need to first decide under which page do you want or under which object do you want to create a new page uh, and then depending on that you would select that particular page right click click on new and from the options here um, there you go so under new you can click on either pages so you'll have another menu item here or you know if you want to create a folder you can do that as well now there are a few things uh, so there's a folder over here uh, you would you would have noticed that there was no new file option and that's because 
the, the those options are sort of restricted depending but that's really depending on what your application is so if i right click on this folder and click on new uh, you'd see i have the option to also add a file now there's already one file over here which is the pdf file um, and that has been added under this folder right so those are that's just the general way of how these of how um, you know pages folders and files work uh, so it's just good to know let's go back to our diagram and now let's look at pages in a bit um, in a bit more detail right so let's uh, look at what do we have under pages so under the pages block we have a few other blocks here now there's quite a few blocks but don't worry about it we'll we'll get to it one block at a time uh, let's start with another block named pages which is under pages now uh, this particular block right so um, now so the this level that we're talking about is really everything related to pages so the first thing we're going to look at is the page tab and what do i mean by page tab so if you click on one of the pages from the content directory in the left you would see that there's a few tabs over here at the top uh, and the first one is the page tab now the page tab um, is where you would spend most of your time editing content right so if you um, if you have your if you if you have been giving in given an editor role or something similar this is this is what you would see right so you would uh, you would see the page tab with some content that you can click and edit so let's click on this one and change this to a capital P and click on save now let me go on to my guest window and click on about us page and you should see that it has already reflected the uppercase p right so this is just a simple way of being able to edit content on the go so we did not the whole purpose of a cms portal is to be able to um, edit content live right provide the support where you can uh, edit the content on your website without having to really deploy new code to the website new changes to the website so there's a whole bunch of features that you get out of a cms portal next up we have the design block now you would notice that that tab isn't available over here and that's because as part of the dancing goat website editors are not given access to the design tab uh, the design tab uh, has has access has has is basically access to be able to edit more things, right? So if I go into another browser here, I'm just signed in as a global administrator. If I click on pages um, and if I click on the about us page, I can see the design tab. Uh, now, if I click on the design tab, I can see the pretty much the same content, but a little more additional elements to it, right? So the design tab allows me to edit the structure of the website, right? So it allows me to um, completely remove uh, or, you know, add new uh, components to the website. Uh, so adding new components to the website will mean that when you view the page uh, on has has a on a, has a user or as an editor uh, from the page tab you would be able to then edit the content right so design tab has the name suggest is really to design the page uh, and the page tab is really where you update the page right so let's go back uh, and so has editors um, and since this this video is really focused on content admin essentials we will use this window and look at um, the view that andrew has that our editor has for on the dancing goat website so we'll just look at the page tab for now uh, finally and then we have here the third one is the forms tab 
the forms uh, block here so what is that so the form is basically another tab here this holds the meta information of the page uh, so you know as you can see there's a few other few bunch of things few few elements here to enter as uh, so if you wanted to change the name of the page this is where you would just change the name and it would almost reflect immediately so the form tab is used uh, to to store some meta information about each and every page right so has content uh, elements or has content authors you will have access to the form tab after the form tab we will we will look at widgets in just a minute but before that uh, you know before we look at widgets we'll look at these other elements over here uh, so the next one that we'll look at is URL and navigation so the URL navigation of a particular page as you would imagine is uh, the URL of the page and the navigation properties of a particular page uh, so to access the URL navigation there are two different uh, menu items to do that click on properties and let's click on URLs first all right so the the information that's on the uh, URLs page is usually auto populated based on uh, based on the page name so that's when you just create the page uh, but of course if you wanted to change um, the URL slug of the webs of the particular page then you can make the changes here and click on save so this should match this part of the URL if we if we do the same and click on navigation so we clicked on properties up here and then clicked on navigation we see a couple of navigation properties the first one is uh, the basic properties which uh, allows us to either include this in the navigation or not and by that I mean include the about us page in the menu or not um, the sitemap is basically for search engines so you don't have to worry about it but usually you would want all the pages to be to be checked you know should appear in the sitemap if you want users to be able to find your page uh, on google search or or any other search tool there's a few other options over here um, which we'll probably look at uh, you know in detail uh, a bit later or in a bit another video uh, one thing that we can quickly look at is URL redirection um, and if you uh, if you have access to your page you might have you might have a few pages with this arrow icon over here this arrow icon tells us that a redirection was set up so if I click on the page navigation it, it, it tells me that there's there's a redirection set up in this case it is set up to its first child which is the first page underneath North America next up we have templates now if you if you notice we have a lot of other options over here so let's click on the properties tab and view what else do we have so you have a lot of things available um, one of the things that we have with us um, is the general tab now the general tab tells us that this is a page type uh, and a few other properties of the of this particular page um, and behind the scenes um, what happens is you have you have different types of pages that you can create so in this case it's a menu item page type and of course each page if you go back to the page tab here has a particular theme has a particular uh, look and feel uh, and so all of that is really decided by the page template so if I go back to the uh, global administrator view click on design and um, scroll a bit over here you can see that the page template in this case is an ad hoc template uh, and if I click on properties I have access to something called template which tells me that this page 
is an ad hoc template. Now it also tells me that uh, it's an ad hoc from the home page. So which means that the home page is where uh, the actual template was created, um, which is also being saved as an ad hoc page. Um, and then, you know, the, the a similar template was used for the about us page, which is also saved as an ad hoc page. Something just for your information that there's there's templates that runs in the background and that basically controls how your website looks and feels. Next up, we have workflows, um, but that is quite similar to scheduling, right? So we will look at both of these two uh, together. So if you go back to pages, uh, if you remember, we changed this to an uppercase P and clicked on save and it immediately showed up on the website. Now, what if you wanted to make these changes, um, but uh, but only make these changes in the future, right? Uh, and only make these changes live in the future. Or what if you just didn't want to save it instantly? You wanted to have you wanted this page to go through a particular workflow. And now we can do this. Uh, now it depends on how your website is set up. Um, but there are there might be a few pages that actually have a workflow applied uh, so let's look at one of these pages over here this page is telling me that the page is currently using a default workflow and it's currently in the published step so let's try and edit a few things and see what you know how it actually behaves as you can see that there's uh, uh, this page says find your nearest cafe but the other pages uh, don't have it's not it's not the same e at the end uh, so let's change this for Europe um, fix this to cafe um, and click on save when you click on save you will notice that this page is now um, a little appears with a little orange icon here or, or a little yellow icon here um, and what this basically tells us that there's a new version that's applied which is a change to cafe uh, to the spelling of it and it has just not been published yet and you will also notice that there's a publish button here um, which you can also add some comments and click on the publish button now what this means is that you can uh, you know make these changes to your website so let's say if you have a workflow applied to your website you can make these changes uh, click on save but not necessarily publish it which means that the, for the users uh, if they click on Europe they will not see the changes yet now when you are ready to make these changes live all you need to do is click on publish in a few minutes in a few seconds really um, this will turn into a green icon and if you refresh this particular page it will show up with the with the, with the updated spelling of cafe so now this is the what's what this is called is really the default workflow which basically allows you to add a few steps to your workflow so you'll be able to edit you'll be able to sort of stage the changes and then when you're ready you can uh, you can publish the changes now uh, what you can also do as I said if you if you wanted to schedule changes to appear in the future to do so you can again click on the changes that you need to make make the changes um, click on save but before you publish we will go to our general um, sorry go to the form tab and we will publish this in the future so that's let's publish it six minutes from now click on save and then uh, so this is, we have set it of set it to a future date now we'll click on the publish button uh, and if you see now you have a green icon here but besides that you also have a blue clock icon which 
tells us that there's a new version scheduled to be published. What this means is that you have made your changes and it's not appeared on the website because it will only appear at 7.30. So that's just a, uh, you know, just uh, a quick sort of a demo on on scheduling changes so you might of course this is just a quick change here to the to the to the letter cafe or to the word cafe but you might make multiple changes to your website and you might want to uh, schedule these changes for the future now coming to the blog that we skipped uh, which is called widgets um, and under that we have three blocks one is blocks of information so widgets, if you don't know what it is, it's basically blocks of information. Now, while explaining the contents from the other tabs over here, we actually interacted with widgets. Uh, and now to see what it is, uh, let's go back to our Dancing Growth page, go back to the About Us page. And, and if you notice that these uh, editable components you know, that you are you, you, that allow you to edit the contents these are really widgets right so these are components on the page that um, that allow you to edit components so this one here is called image top which allows you to change the image um, a widget to be able to change this image over here this is just a regular text um, widget that allows you to uh, edit the contents of it Let's try the home page with a little more information here. There you go. This is more like it. So you might find blocks like this on your page with, um, if you hover over it, you'll have little this icon called configure widget. Uh, if you click on the icon, click on configure, it'll open up a pop-up uh, which is called widget properties. Uh, now this is another way to edit the content of a widget, right? So this 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 little this basically looks like a little form. It allows you to update the content. Uh, once you're satisfied with it, um, you can click on save and close. And assuming you've done some content changes, it should appear over here. Now you you will you will also have access to um, this icon over here, a little menu over here. Um, which allows you to click on it and add a new widget if you want to. So let's search for text, click on rich text and you know you can choose whatever widget that you want to apply, click on it, select it and then add whatever content that you want, click on save and that content will show up in your blog as well so just we just added a rich text widget which is separate to this with its own content right so pretty simple um, each widget is really its own block of information and uh, you know you can individually customize the widget you can add or remove the widget if you if you want or if you don't want uh, and that's uh, something that you would um, you know, deal on with a day-to-day, -day, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, depending on how your application is configured, you might have a lot of custom widgets, but of course, Kentico provides a lot of built-in widgets as well. And finally, we have widgets versus web parts. Um, so if you, as an editor uh, from the page tab, you will always deal with widgets, uh, but you might hear the term web part as well. So the difference between a widget and a web part is that um, a widget is really built from a web part, uh, but it's not the other way around, right? So you have to build a web part first, and then you can create a widget out of that web part. So that allows you to add that particular component to the page tab. Uh, the other difference is that you would always find widgets on uh, most of the time at least you would always find widgets on uh, on the page tab and web parts on the design tab now when you add a widget it always sticks to the page that you've added right but if you add a web part 
right if you do have access to the design tab and you do add a web part um, it will get added to that page but it will also get added to other pages that use the same page template right um, now you know we just we just looked at a page template called ad hoc home uh, of course if other pages use the same page template then it will get added to those pages as well of course there are pros and cons with this uh, if you want a particular component to appear on all the pages of a particular type then obviously web parts is that's something that you need to add and if you just want and as a content author uh, you will just want to add certain widgets on certain pages and that's when or certain components on certain pages and that's when you will choose widgets now the reason i'm mentioning this right widgets versus web parts is so that you just know right so that you 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 know what are you using which is widgets uh, but you also know what web parts are right so just in case you want something that needs to appear on other pages you can approach your developers and request them to build a new web part or uh, enable a particular web part on these pages right so someone else can can do that for you so it's just is this is it's information that's that's really good to know um and and and, and really uh, you know allows you to to be more confident in 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 dealing with kentico cms now if your website uh, you know your admin portal does not have a page tab and a form tab uh, that means it's just configured differently uh, so the the demo that we are looking at the site that we are looking at in this particular video is kentico 12 but built as a portal engine um, but your site may very well be configured using the MVC development module, uh, which in this case, it would just appear a bit differently. So the website that the public users would see, they, they would not really see any difference. But in terms of a content admin user experience, um, there are certain things that would change. Uh, for example, so this is an MVC admin portal over here. Uh, if you can see, is, is still the same dancing goat uh, website but you don't have the form tab instead you have a page tab and you have a content tab uh, and in some of the pages you just might have uh, you might not even have a page tab so you might just have the about a section which is made up of like three blocks uh, and each has just a content tab which you can update uh, so the key thing here is whether your website um, is built using the portal engine or the MVC. It, it, it does not matter um, as long as you understand the Kentico CMS fundamentals, whether it is editing content on the page tab or on the content tab. Uh, it's it's really one of the same once you sort of understand what the fundamentals are. So the rest of the UI, the, the the user experience kind of is just is is, is really the same um, so i really recommend you to keep watching uh, but you know of course a few other features may or may not exist depending on how your application was built so i would really suggest for you to uh, for you to get in touch with your internal IT team and clarify this fact you know if if you if there's a confusion uh, get your internal IT team to um, Get your internal IT team to clarify if the if the Kentico website is built using MVC model or or portal engine, um, and the rest of it you should be fine with it. All right, so this marks the end of these uh, components that we just had a look at. Uh, all of the content over here was under the blue section, which is the no stuff section. Um, and um, now we will look at the find stuff section under finding stuff we have a few other things to look at uh, so we as a content author you will obviously deal with a lot of page contents so you need to find different things of a page uh, or to find different pages uh, and we'll look at other a few other things as well first up 
we will look at page contents. So finding things on a page or finding page itself. Now, one of the things on the side here is articles. On the articles page, you would notice that it's a collection of individual articles. And if I click on one of these articles, it takes me to a single individual article. So let's say I wanted to update um, the title of or, you know, let's, let's just update the first paragraph of the of this particular page. Right. So I need to know I need to now I need to find this particular page. So the easiest way to find is to have a look at the URL. Uh, this particular page is under the articles section. So the easiest way is to actually look at or find it that way. So if I maximize articles, I can see there's a bunch of articles underneath and this one is coffee beverages explained, uh, which is straight away here. Coffee beverages explained, clicked on it and that's what it is. Now, uh, we found the page, we found the page, but you would notice that there is, there is uh, no widget on this page to be able to edit right so there's there's no there's no way to actually edit the content of this particular page and so if you go back to a diagram the page contents right so each page now of course it it, it, it you know depending on how your application is set up it might be it might be different there might be different ways uh, but there's, there's a general three step uh, rule that you can actually follow and you can you can use to find how to update the contents of a particular page. The first thing you would look at is as a content author, you would look at widgets, right? So we were all this time we were editing widgets, you know, or, or we were just updating the content on the page tab. Uh, so all of those are widgets. And the easiest way is to look at widgets. At the very beginning the second thing as a content author is to look at the form tab so in this case we we looked at widgets but the widget is not there so you can update the content of this particular page so next we will look at the form tab now the form tab actually shows us a whole bunch of information so it's not just the metadata but there are images there are there's a summary there's text and there's of course the regular publish from publish to now what do we have here so this text if you scroll down is actually is actually all the contents of the page right so all of this contents is actually coming from the coming from the form form tab over here right um, and so in this case uh, your search your search expedition would end over here right over here but let's say if the content was not from the form tab if, if that's not the place from where the content was coming from then then the other place that it could have been coming from is the web part configurations from the web parts basically uh, so before we edit this form tab let me show you what I mean by web part configuration let's go back to the about us page if i remember correctly though no it is actually the it's actually the other page mm. all right so um over here in the home page if you see uh, you know you have you have a little this icon over here to be able to uh, to be able to update this particular uh, component over here you we, we already added a new content here so we know that there's an option to add a widget here but what about uh, the text for that's on this map right so we don't have any option to edit this component here if you go into the form tab it's not available as well right so this is a perfect example of uh, of that content actually not being available to edit from the page or the form tab 
but just to show you so now in this case of course since you can't update it you should probably get someone who has access to the design tab to update the contents of this page um, and let's say if I got in touch with another person uh, and that person has access to the design tab so they'll go to the design tab and if you scroll down here you can see that this is available to edit if I click on that um, if I click on that I can see that these little three uh, places can be updated from here and then you will update the person will update the content save and close and you will see the changes instantly obviously because this video is focused on content admin essentials we are not going to look at the design tab and we're not looking going to change that actually right so let's go back and you know to the form tab that we that we had looked at before for this article we want to change the first paragraph right so let's click on create a new version and change this to make this bold now let's click on save so if you click on the form or the page tab you can see that the changes that we just did to the form tab have been applied if the text is now bold um, so we can then click on submit for approval uh, which is just another really step in the in the page flow right so this particular page for example is is being configured with the social media workflow right not the default workflow in which case um, we have pending changes to the site or to the page but after we have clicked on submit for approval we don't have any button to actually publish it and that's because we don't have right Andrew uh, here as an editor does not have access to approve these changes to approve the changes you probably go to another user who has access to update it this person you know being the global administrator that we looked at in this example has access to approve or reject these changes let's say we just want to approve these changes publish only uh, and this makes these changes live so now if we go as a public user as a guest user right we go to this page and we refresh this page we will see that the words coffee drinking culture is now bold so this was a quick example of how to find stuff on the page right so before you actually end up doing things to the page uh, which we did end up doing we need to we need to find things uh, and then that's really what we're looking at so we looked at finding contents on the page that is widgets forms and web parts now we're looking at uh, now we're going to take a look at uh, media library right so we have these images I keep going to the about us page for some reason right now we have all these images that that are on the site um, and we want to be able to change the images um, as I said earlier right at the, at the somewhat the start of the video or at least 40 minutes before this uh, I said that we can add files uh, into the content tree maybe not over here but maybe somewhere else and obviously that includes images but it is not advised it's not recommended to really add images to the content tree itself what you really want to do is make use of media library um, and uh, Kentico should uh, you know using using one of these tools Kentico should um, kind of rec force you down that route as well so let's say we do want to change this image over here on the about us page we'll click on so this widget is called well it's really named image top which is really just an image and allows us to select a different image here so has content authors right as content admins you'll click on select um, and this uh, really opens up another select image dialog box 
so you have attachments, you have um, which is what this image is coming from, uh, you have content, which in case if your image was in the content tree, then you'll use that, and then finally you have the media library. Now this is really the recommended one. So if you have access to media library and if, you, if there is a media library set up, I would recommend using the media library. So in this case for Dancing Goat, we have few folders. So let's click on the home page folder uh, and we see that there's a few images already in here, but let's see you want to upload a new image. Right, so let's first of all download an image. So we'll go to unsplash.com and we'll have Paris Parista and we will download the first image that we can find. Thank you, Tyler. Next for the photo. Um, we'll close this for now. Go back to our select image dialog box, click on upload and under downloads we have we have we have our image so you have this image over here let's click on the image and click on select and that should uh, pretty much change the image on the page uh, so now to save the to save these changes you know the drill click on save and these changes should go live as a public user, we are in the guest mode. Uh, if you click on the About Us tab, you will see that the new image that we just added, that we just downloaded from unsplash.com, um, we have that image displaying on the About Us page here. Now, if you wanted to actually have a look at the media library itself, right? So not from any of these controls, you can click on this Kentico icon over here, which opens the applications, list of applications, type in media library, which in this case it was already visible um, and that should take you to the media library now we added the we added the new image from unsplash into the home page library so if you click on edit you can see that there's tyler nexus photo here so that's the image um, but of course you can add into different other folders as well so now, if you notice that this, this quite, um, these are quite contextual photos, and I would definitely recommend uh, you creating them. So if you, if you're starting from scratch, then um, the recommendation is um, add new media libraries based on where these photos are going to use, right? So the photos are going to be used. So your uh, this list should be just like a collection. So in this case, as you can see, it you know, as part of the Dancing Goat web template, we have a email campaign, uh, email campaigns library setup, uh, which is, as the description says, images or assets are uh, used for our email campaigns. Um, and so, uh, if you are setting up a new one, you probably want to set it up. Uh, you would set up a library based on where the images or other static files where it's going to be used um, and of course uh, just a quick note that it's not just images but as I said a static file so you know you can upload a PDF and you can upload a, you know in a, any other document as well Next up, we are looking at, we are going to find forms. We're going to find forms on the page, all right? Um, but we're not going to find it from the portal. First, let's, as a public user, let's find a form on a particular page. If I look at the menu, the one place that I am quite sure I'll find a form is on the contact us page. Uh, so I'll click on contact us. Uh, or contact and scroll down and I see that there's a form over here now I want to um, I want to what do I want to do I want to mm, I want to update the labels of this form right uh, so I want to 
uh, capitalize the letters N and the letter A, right? So I want to do that. Uh, now, obviously, as you know, before doing stuff, you need to you need to know how to find stuff. Uh, so let's go. Actually, let's minimize this. Let's go back to our Andrew Jones uh, user. So the editor. The first thing to find is actually to find the page, right? The first step. Uh, so you find the page, which is the contact page. On the page tab, uh, you scroll down to the form, uh, and over here you see that this is editable. So you can change this to send us a capital M message, and you can edit that. But as you as you can see, you can you cannot edit the actual label of the form. So how does this work? Um, now the the obviously obvious steps is to um, is to find out. Um, from where the form is coming from, right? Uh, so obviously the page tab, there's no option to find out from where the form is coming from. You click on the form tab and there's no option in there as well. So that means it has to be coming in from somewhere else. Now we could go uh, to the you know global administrator or developer user and, and find it. Um, um, but what I want to do is I want to look at this logically, right? So I know that there's a form on the page uh, and let's see what do we have here in the menu, right? If I search for form, uh, which is pretty much the first, which was really the first option over here in the content management. Uh, so even though we don't have access to the design tab, I want you really to think logically, right? So that's what really want, want to get out of this is um, logically you know that there's a form so is to really find forms uh, and see uh, you know what uh, form might best what might be best really fit for that page um, there's a few forms over here uh, there's another there's one form that's named send as a message which sort of matches with this one here so it should be the same form. So let's click on edit. Um, there's a few entries. There's a few other options in here as well. There you go. So there's a send as a message form, uh, which is also sort of codenamed contact us, which we are not able to edit. Um, one of the options that you have, right? Uh, so if you remember the task in hand was to update these labels over here. So to do that, we'll go to the form builder tab and you would notice that there's these fields. Of course, you can add more fields. So as a content editor, you have access to do that. Um, but what we want to do is update an existing one. So let's click on the first one. Um, and we see that and we see that uh, we have uh, a few properties and some validation rules that can be applied uh, now in this particular example unfortunately uh, we have which this should have been editable it is not uh, and the reason is because uh, it is the message that it's saying over here is that it is localized and we don't have permissions to do that not a problem at all uh, let us look at how you would um, since you know since we are not able to update the label of the of these properties let's make the first name a required field just to show you how to really edit a form right that's basically what we want to get out of this and we'll actually add a form later in this video uh, and we'll we'll look at that in a minute Right, so let's click on this required field, which save these changes. Oops, access denied to resource forms. Permission edit forms required. There you go. So apparently you cannot edit the form. Uh, and so depending on obviously how your access is configured, um, you may not have access to, to edit uh, things. 
and in this case we just tried uh, editing a form which is a perfect example of what might what might happen in the real life environment you know you won't really have um, you won't really have a cheat sheet of what you can and can't do or what it a, a very granular information of what you can edit and what you can't um, and so this is just a perfect example of uh, you know of us being able to see the form um, but we still can't edit it right uh, but the most important thing that we got out of this is that we are able to find uh, find what the form is right we found it on this page uh, we know what from where the form was coming in and we know uh, how to locate that form as well now of course if you in your real life situation if you do get an access denied message um, then you can update your uh, you can update the person or your IT staff uh, who might have access to to this page um, now just for the sake of you know sort of a completion of this request so now uh, you know in, in in your real life situation you got an access denied which you can't access so you get in touch with the id person to either edit it for you or give you access to edit the form um, so that's where you would really stop um, but let's say if i i was to just demo editing the contents of the page uh, i would go to form and i would click on edit form builder click on the first name and I do have access to edit the label click on update um, the change has been saved um, and let's just go back and now as a public user let me refresh this page uh, and what I see here is the name the, the actual requirement that we had that was to update the uh, the letter N and make it up a case that's been applicable right so the request from Andrew um, he tried to do it but he could not so he got in touch with uh, his internal IT person which in this case was a global administrator and the administrator um, processed the request for him so that's it for the form now we have something called has custom table data um, now this one for this particular user for you know Andrew is not really available as uh, so if I click on custom table data it's not really available but just this is just sort of an FYI or for your information of where else you can find data and of course it's not limited to that there's more components in there um, but just something to keep uh, to keep an eye for that's it for the find stuff uh, section of this video now we will look at doing stuff now for the final final section of this video we will look at doing stuff the first thing is really just a concept right the concept of testing your changes first now in this case we are editing local host 661 um, and we are you know straight away seeing the changes over here um, but in a real life example, in a real life example, you would have multiple environments, right? You would have your main website, uh, which is uh, which is your, you know, the application that you support or the business that you work for, uh, and that is a public that could be a public facing website. Uh, so if you are not sure of anything, uh, you should you should really be making your changes into a test environment, um, confirming that your changes work as expected, and then going ahead and updating the main production website, uh, right? Uh, so of course you don't need to do this for every other change, as content admins, uh, you know, you you are limited to the changes that you can make, uh, which is really just content authoring, um, which is limited to content authoring, and um, those changes can be reversed quite easily uh, but just in case if you're new if you know someone who's watching this video if you're not familiar with with certain stuff uh, it is recommended that you do things in a non-production or a test environment and then once you're comfortable do it in the 
uh, you know live or production environment after that let's look at uh, something called has what you see is what you get uh, w y s i w y g um, so this is uh, sort of a format for rich text editing and uh, most of your changes you might actually end up updating content in a what you see is what you get editor uh, and uh, that's really about doing stuff now we did do quite a bit of things um, earlier in our find stuff section right we updated the page we changed the image as well right we uploaded a new image and actually changed it so let's just look at it once more so if you click on pages um, and if we click on so let's look at what we can edit so you have coffee processing techniques let's let's try and edit this article right so it's it's quite um, the article is full of text so let's you know add some add some elements to it oops no click on articles and so this is coffee processing techniques uh, as you would if you recall uh, the content is coming from the form tab um, and so let's create a new version and click on text now here what you see is uh, you know plain text but uh, what you can also see is a few elements over here that's available at the very top uh, and you know depending on what page you're on what page you're in and uh, you might find more options available right so in this case uh, we have oh, the only option is to make um, contents bold italics underlines uh, you can add list items to it uh, so let's see if you um, there's a list item uh, you can add links so if you click on um, coffee farm highlight the text coffee farm click on the link icon and 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 let's insert a web link there you go web link to let's say you know coffee farm.com not even sure if this is a real website but let's save and close uh, and you'll see that this text is now linked um, similarly you can add images and videos so we do have an image that we just uploaded so let's make use of that let's add an image and it'll ask us to upload it again so we do that all right there you go so it's a huge image uh, and let's click on save and see what a page looks like so we have our bold text underlined we have our bullet points uh, we have a very huge image and of course the link itself right so obviously when you're updating content you would need to make sure that your image is of the right size um, and you know uh, just some really um, basic checks that you could do before actually uploading the image um, now to make these changes live I would click on submit for approval and somebody should be able to uh, you know somebody who has access to um, approving these changes should be able to approve these changes for me let's go back to the home page and look at another example of uh, rich text so this is the widget that we just added earlier in this video um, if I make certain elements demo content make it bold I can see that that has been you know made bold and it um, is, is now bold and in italics as well uh, so just some some changes like this is is really good to know um, it's really good to know how to you know how to really make these changes when you when you wanted to uh, while while talking about doing stuff I just wanted to touch base on caching um, now for any page so if you click on now that we're in the home page let's minimize this let's click on general 
scroll down to something called as output cache um, now depending on what you know how your application is configured in the real life uh, you might have uh, caching minutes set up so just to uh, now of course this is a developer concept uh, but just to give you an idea of what caching is is basically um, is basically storing uh, a you know a version of the content for a certain amount of time so that when users uh, visit a particular page uh, the information is retrieved from the cache which is supposed to be faster and uh, less database um, expensive right so um, that information that is stored in the cache can be configured by adding cache minutes uh, so let's say if it was set to five minutes uh, if it was set to five minutes then the information on a particular page on this particular page for example would be cached for five minutes uh, which means that if you make any changes uh, to the site like we just did uh, the changes might not appear for the public user immediately so if I would have refreshed the home page I might have not seen the changes that we just made right uh, but now to force the changes to really break the cache or clear the cache before the uh, five minute cache duration what you could do is click on the clear output cache button this would clear the output cache and the next time the user visits the page um, he, he or she would be able to see the updated changes made on that particular page so you would have noticed when it clicked on the clear output cache it says output cache for this page and its children was cleared successfully so that is something to note in this case there's just a single page over here but let's say if you would have clicked on the clear output cache button on the store page here this would have obviously cleared the cache for the store page but because this page has child pages inside it multiple pages inside it it would have cleared the cache for these pages as well right uh -huh. so this is just something to note when you are updating content of course if none of that actually works so you know if you've made changes you're sure that the changes should appear on the public side and um, you have cleared the cache uh, and it's still not appearing then definitely you should go back to your internal IT support team or developer team uh, and and uh, uh, have get them to look and in, look into it uh, and the final thing that we will look at in the doing stuff section uh, is forms um, now as I said uh, I guess just to sort of re-emphasize that this is the essentials only video there's obviously a lot more that you can do with with Kentico um, you know there's a whole bunch of marketing and e-commerce features uh, and, and so many other features that we could look at um, but of course uh, because this is an essentials video uh, I just want to make sure that you feel confident to to update content on your site uh, and I thought let me just uh, and, let me, and, and so this this video really covers the essential concepts um, that you might uh, you know you know occur or you, you want you might face on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and so forms is one of the things uh, and if you notice if you sorry if you remember we didn't have access to edit a form and of obviously didn't have access to create a form either uh, and so by we I mean the user Andrew Jones who is an editor uh, but what I've done is um, I have gone ahead and on another on another uh, uh, at another time I've gone ahead and actually given uh, this content editor permissions to be able to add the add the form uh, so I just did that uh, just before we could get into the do stuff section um, and so now hopefully the, the user should be um, should have access to create a new form uh, so let's look at uh, a sort of a practical example um, let's try and add a new form um, rather than just edit an existing form um, and of course in this way we'll be able to 
look at a whole bunch of other things as well uh, so let's try and create a new form first so forms now I really appreciate the fact that you might not have this new forms button available um, and you know it's just a matter of permissions um, but you know just in case you do have access um, you know so instead of editing an existing form I thought let's just have a look at a brand new form so if you click on the new form button uh, we'll let's call this um, let's call this just a uh, random uh, newsletter subscription right it's just a test form uh, that we want to create and the first thing that we want to do is add an email right so we want to capture the email address of the user we want to make this a required field um, that we do it from the properties and yeah, in terms of validation you could add a validation rule uh, and under the rules you have built-in validation rules um, one of one of the validation rule is email uh, and you can obviously set a custom error message as well so please enter a valid email address apply all right so we've added a component to our form uh, and obviously this the changes are being saved uh, now let's look at uh, you know what are the other things that we can change obviously we don't change this what we want to do is probably uh, check our recorded data which is obviously going to be zero um, and so you have oops you have the email notifications now I just wanted to touch base on this really um, um, so with, with, with this uh, what happens is whenever you whenever you know whenever user submits a form uh, obviously the form details will be recorded under this tab so the recorded data tab but you can also have the information being emailed to a particular inbox right so if I click on this one here and I say sender email is you know admin at dancing code dot local so the sender email address will be sort of like an admin email inbox that you might have and let's say the uh, the recipient is really the recipient email is really the email address that you want these form submissions to go to um, and the subject of this is random random form submissions uh, obviously these are completely random email addresses but in the real world you would add valid email addresses autoresponder is if you want the user who submitted the form if you want that person to get sort of a confirmation email uh, and so you can click on email and the form email would be uh, admin at dancing good dot local uh, thank you for submitting did I spell that correct yes so thank thanks for sending as your email address oops we'll get in touch with with you shortly so this email will go to the user who submitted the form um, and of course there's a whole bunch of other things that can be uh, updated um, like layouts fields uh, and whatnot but for now what we'll do is we'll go back to a particular page and we'll try and add this form to the a particular page so let's see if we have widgets in widget zone anywhere I know that on the home page there was a widget zone let's 
there's a widget zone at the top. So let's just add, let's see if there's an if there's the form widget available for Andrew. So you have online form. It's not available. Oh there you go. So I clicked on I select I search for form. Uh, and what if we want to do is we want to add an online form um, on the site. So what I'm really trying to do is the form that we just created, we want that form to appear on the page. Uh, and to do that, let's select the form, um, a random newsletter subscription. Um, we'll, this is just really marketing properties uh, for our online marketing components. Uh, we will leave the widget containers as it is and click on save and close. This uh, should show up as a form over here. Um, of course, excuse the fact that it is, it is not displaying uh, correctly. That's because the right styles have not been applied. Now, of course, this is just a demo video, so we won't go into, you know, we won't go into making this look pretty. Uh, we'll just look at what the functionality of it is uh, and sort of see the end-to-end -end flow of things, right? Uh, so we've got uh, we've got a form added to the page. Uh, now in a real-world example, obviously if the form does not align well, then you get in touch with somebody who uh, might be able to help you with this. Uh, and so let's check our home page now. We see that our form has been added to the page. So let's um, so let's enter the email address of the user. So let's oops. Oh, okay, there you go. So the text has been is white as well. So uh, local post dot local. So I appreciate the fact that it is. You can't really see the text that I was entering, so I've just selected all the text. And the reason is because uh, uh, the, the CSS styles have actually set the text on this block to be white, just because the background is dark gray. Uh, and so because you've not applied the right styling, this is what it actually shows up. So let's see if it actually submits the form. Click on the submit button and the changes were saved. So that means the form has been submitted. Right, so hopefully the changes are now in Kentigo. Let's go back to our Andrew Jones user and see who has submitted our form. Click on forms, and we see that there's one entry in random newsletter subscription. We click on edit to see the recorded data, and we see that the the form submission is right over here. Now, um, in the background, uh, you know, emails would have been generated. I just quickly searched for emails, uh, and of course, we don't have access to that as a content user, so we'll just leave that out of this video. Um, and uh, you know, of course, if I, I will be making another video for you know for de for the dev developers out there, uh, which will cover a lot more contents but from a developer perspective uh, and so we will have a look at the dancing goat website from um, this particular account which has more um, which does not have as much restrictions as the content admin uh, so in just like that we have actually completed the entire diagram uh, so this was the Kendico content admin essentials video I, I, I hope you I hope you enjoyed this um, I know we have we covered a lot of things uh, you know and just to summarize I guess we we covered uh, a lot of things under the no stuff where we had a look at quite a bit of conceptual uh, knowledge then we looked at finding stuff which is really essential to uh, really key to be able to actually then do stuff so we, we covered a lot of content. I appreciate the fact that you, you, have, you have, if you're watching this video, you have still stuck around um, and and you stuck around till the end. Uh, and, and I hope you really learned something new today. 
Um, if you want to check out the, the Kentico product itself, you can head over to their website, kentico.com. And if you want to check out this particular product, that is the experience, Kentico experience, which is the digital experience product or digital experience platform, uh, you can head over to experience.io to have a look at their website. If you have any questions, uh, which you may have um, from the whole video, uh, feel free to post it in the comments below and I will get to it. I will try and answer as many questions as I can. Um, and if not, uh, then uh, you know you know the drill. Uh, you might have watched other YouTube videos, so you know to subscribe, like, and and share this video if you found this useful. Um, definitely do subscribe and hit that bell icon uh, and you know, you'll be notified for any other future videos that I will post, um, I'll post very soon. All right, thank you so much for watching uh, and definitely stay tuned for more content. Thank you.